The National Security Advisor, Royal Guard Commander and the Secretary General of the Supreme Defense Council, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, announced that the first fully Bahraini satellite will be named Al Mundar. His Highness also unveiled the official logo of the Bahraini Space Mission, which comes to implement the vision of His Majesty the King and the directors of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. He stated that 35% of the satellite project has been completed, adding that it is a new milestone for the kingdom and the space sector and towards the goal of utilizing space technology to serve sustainable development efforts in the kingdom. Hazan stated that Al Mundar's design and construction is currently underway in Bahrain by a fully Bahraini team. He said that Al Mundar project follows the success of the launch of the first satellite Light One and aims at optimizing national capacity in designing, constructing, testing and operating satellites and that the project will create a boost to scientific research in the areas of space, artificial intelligence and cybersecurity in Bahrain. He stated that Al Mundar will provide space data on Bahrain that will be analyzed using lineup of Bahraini innovations that will be part of the satellite's load, adding that the mission of the satellite will include capturing images of the kingdom and its regional waters and collecting data that will feed into several sectors. Bahraini innovations will be tested in outer space as part of this project to further improve them before using them in upcoming projects. His Highness commended the continuous efforts of the National Space Science Agency team in projects, engagement and science research which improves Bahrain's status in the global space sector. He also expressed appreciation for its work in building national capacity, fostering creativity and innovation, and its endeavors to fulfill the requirements of building the future. His Highness also commended the contributions of the Bahrain space team whose work has demonstrated the true metal of Bahraini youth and their determination to serve the kingdom through achieving further scientific and technological advancement. On behalf of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa inaugurated the meetings of the Assembly of the Interparliamentary Union in its 146th session of the accompanying meetings. The meeting held under the royal auspices during the period from 11 to the 15th of March under the slogan promoting peaceful coexistence and inclusive societies combating intolerance. In the presence of President of the IPU Duarte Bakeko, Secretary General of the Union Martin Chongong, Speaker of the Council of Representatives Ahmed Lamsalam and Chairman of the Shura Council Ali Saleh. On this occasion, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah expressed gratitude to His Majesty the King for his patronage of this global event and what this embodies as an affirmation of Bahrain's constant keen desire to share the international community's aspiration to achieve security, stability and peace for people by employing the values of justice, equality, democracy and respect for human rights. He noted the rich experience and history of Bahrain in laying the foundations of the democratic system, which is one of the most important pillars of the comprehensive development process led by His Majesty the King and with the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, which contributed to the Kingdom gaining the confidence of hosting this important international gathering. Delegated by His Majesty the King, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah delivered His Majesty's address on the occasion and announced the commencement of the meetings.
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أصحاب المعالي والسعادة الحضور الكرام السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته فإنه لمن دواعي سروري أن أرحب بكم في مملكة البحرين وبتكليف من سيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى آل خليفة ملك البلاد المعظم حفظه الله ورعاه فإنه ليشرفني أن ألقي عليكم الكلمة السامية بجلالته أيده الله بمناسبة اجتماعات الجمعية العامة للاتحاد البرلماني الدولي في دورتها المئة وستة واربعين والاجتماعات المصاحبة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم معالي السيد بوارتي باتشيكو رئيس الاتحاد البرلماني الدولي سعادة السيد مارتن شونغونغ الأمين العام للاتحاد البرلماني الدولي سعادة ممثل الأمين العام للأمم المتحدة معالي السيد أحمد بن سلمان مسلم رئيس مجلس النواب معالي السيد علي بن صالح الصالح رئيس مجلس الشورى أصحاب المعالي والسعادة السيدات والسادة الحضور الكرام السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته يسعدنا أن نرحب بكم اليوم بمناسبة اجتماعات الجمعية العامة للاتحاد البرلماني الدولي في دورتها المئة وستة واربعين والاجتماعات المصاحبة متمنين لكم طيب الإقامة في مملكة البحرين بلد المحبة والتسامح وملتقى التآلف والتعايش الديني والثقافي والحضاري وإنه لمن دواعي سرورنا تركيز هذه الدورة على موضوع تعزيز التعايش السلمي والمجتمعات الشاملة مكافحة التعصب بما يعكس إدراكنا المشترك لأهمية إرساء قيم التسامح والسلام ونبذ الفرقة والكراهية وترسيخ التضامن الإنساني كركائز أساسية لتعزيز الأمن والاستقرار والرخاء والتنمية المستدامة مؤكدين اعتزازنا بثقتكم في اختيار مملكة البحرين لاحتضان أكبر التجمعات البرلمانية الدولية وأعرقها ما أطيب الأمنيات لكم بالتوفيق في خروج هذا الحدث العالمي بنتائج مثمرة تعبر عن إرادة شعوب العالم وتطلعاتها نحو مجتمعات تنعم بالأمن والاستقرار والسلام وتزدهر بالعدالة واحترام حقوق الإنسان أصحاب المعالي والسعادة الحضور الكرام تنعقد اجتماعاتكم اليوم وسط ظروف استثنائية يشهد فيها العالم موجات من الكراهية والعداوة والحروب والكوارث الطبيعية كالزلازل والفيضانات والأزمات المتعلقة بالتغيرات المناخية والأمن المائي والغذائي وتفاقم مخاطر التطرف والإرهاب وغيرها من التحديات التي تمس حاضر البشرية وتهدد مستقبل الأجيال المقبلة وتفرض هذه التحديات علينا جميعا قادة وحكومات وبرلمانات مسؤوليات مضاعفة في بناء نظام سياسي وأمني واقتصادي عالمي أكثر عدالة وإنصاف وتضامنا على أسس راسخة من الود والاحترام المتبادل والتعايش السلمي والشراكة الدولية في حفظ الأمن والسلام الدولي 
وتكريس مبادئ ميثاق الأمم المتحدة والقوانين الدولية وهنا تبرز أهمية دور الدبلوماسية البرلمانية تحت مظلة الاتحاد البرلماني الدولي في التوعية بالقضايا والتحديات الراهنة من خلال تشجيع التعاون وتبادل الخبرات بين البرلمانات الوطنية وتعزيز دورها الرقابي والتنموي في حث الحكومات على وضع وتنفيذ تدابير وإجراءات أكثر فاعلية وحرصاً على أمن الإنسانية ورخائها ونتطلع في هذا الصدد إلى العمل المشترك على مستويين أولهما ترسيخ العدالة وسيادة القانون والتمسك بمبادئ العمل البرلماني المسؤول وحماية حقوق الإنسان وحرياته وكرامته وفق تشريعات عصرية تتوافق مع المواثيق الحقوقية الدولية وثانيهما تبني سياسات خارجية تحترم سيادة الدولة وخصوصياتها الثقافية والحضارية ووحدتها وسلامة أراضيها دون وصاية أو تدخلات خارجية وتحرص على تسوية النزاعات بالطرق الدبلوماسية وإحياء فرص السلام العادل والشامل والدائم في جميع أنحاء العالم وتكريس قيم التضامن الإنساني والحوار بين الحضارات والأديان والثقافات والتعاون في محاربة التطرف والإرهاب ومنع مخاطر أسلحة الدمار الشامل أصحاب المعالي والسعادة الحضور الكرام إن مملكة البحرين وإذ تثمن استضافتها لهذا المحفل البرلماني العالمي لتؤكد اعتزازها بنهجها الحضاري القائم على التعايش وسيادة القانون واحترام حقوق الإنسان والتنوع الثقافي والديني كثوابت أساسية منذ الإجماع الوطني على إقرار ميثاق العمل الوطني وترسيخ دولة القانون والمؤسسات الدستورية ونفخر في هذا الصدد بنجاح البرلمان بمجلسيه الشورى والنواب على مدى ستة فصول تشريعية ولأكثر من عقدين في أن يقدم نموذجاً على حيوية مسيرتنا التنموية في تعبيره بصدق وأمانة عن إرادة المواطنين رجالاً ونساء لا سيما بعد نجاح الانتخابات النيابية الأخيرة بنسبة مشاركة شعبية تجاوزت 73% ومواصلة مهامه التشريعية والرقابية في إطار الفصل بين السلطات وتعاونها وفقاً للدستور ولقد تمكنا بفضل التعاون البناء والشراكة الفاعلة بين السلطتين التشريعية والتنفيذية من إصدار تشريعات متقدمة عززت من احترام حقوق الإنسان وحرياته السياسية والمدنية والاقتصادية والاجتماعية والثقافية في وجود سلطة قضائية ومؤسسات حقوقية وأهلية ذات استقلالية تامة وإننا وإذ نؤكد عزمنا على مواصلة إنجازاتنا الديمقراطية والحقوقية لنجدد تمسكنا بالسلام كخيار استراتيجي وضرورة حتمية لتحقيق الأمن والازدهار والتنمية الشاملة وحماية الحقوق والحريات وفق ثوابت وقيم دينية وتاريخية متوارثة ومبادئ دستورية راسخة وتشريعات وسياسات مستدامة تجسدت في إعلان مملكة البحرين ومبادرات مركز الملك حمد العالمي للتعايش السلمي وتوقيع اتفاق 
إعلان تأييد السلام ومبادرات دبلوماسية وبرلمانية أكدت التزامنا الدائم بإرساء قيم السلام والتسامح وتعزيز الوآم بين جميع الشعوب من مختلف الأديان والثقافات والحضارات أصحاب المعالي والسعادة الحضور الكرام وإننا لنتطلع إلى اجتماعكم اليوم وكلنا أمل في التوافق حول قرارات معززة لروح التسامح والتعايش السلمي وتعميق الشراكة الدولية في تحقيق الأمن والسلام وإنهاء الحروب والأزمات بالطرق السلمية ودعم أهداف التنمية المستدامة عبر حلول عادلة لقضايا البيئة والتغيرات المناخية وتأمين الملاحة الدولية وإمدادات الطاقة والتعاون الاقتصادي في ضمان الأمن المائي والغذائي وتيسير التبادل التجاري والاستثمار في مشروعات الطاقة المتجددة والتحول الرقمي وعلوم المستقبل ولمواجهة التحديات الراهنة فإننا بحاجة أيضاً إلى تشجيع العمل الإنساني الدولي في مساعدة الدول الأقل نمواً وإغاثة ملايين المنكوبين من اللاجئين والنازحين وضحايا الحروب والكوارث والأوبئة والتوظيف الأمثل للموارد المالية للأغراض التنموية ووضع حد للصراعات ومنع استنزاف الثروات في بث العداوة والكراهية واتساقاً مع موضوع هذه الدولة نجدد دعوتنا للمجتمع الدولي إلى تعزيز التعاون التشريعي والتقني في إقرار اتفاقية دولية لتجريم خطابات الكراهية الدينية والطائفية والعنصرية بجميع صورها ومنع استغلال الحريات والمنصات الإعلامية والرقمية في ازدراء الأديان أو التحريض على التعصب والتطرف والإرهاب والعمل الجماعي على نشر ثقافة السلام والتفاهم وقبول الآخر وتعزيز عرى التآخي والصداقة بين الأمم وإدماج هذه القيم وتعميمها في المناهج التعليمية والأنشطة الدينية والثقافية والرياضية استرشاداً بمبادئ الإعلان العالمي لحقوق الإنسان ودعوة الأديان كافة إلى التسامح والمحبة نجدد الترحيب بكم في بلدكم الثاني آملين أن تمثل هذه الاجتماعات فرصة لإطلاعكم عن كثب على حقيقة التطور الحضاري في بلادنا وما نشهده من منجزات تنموية وحضارية وتعايش ديني وثقافي مع تمنياتنا لكم بالتوفيق والسداد لما يعود بالأمن والسلام والتسامح والرخاء على جميع أعضاء الأسرة البشرية الواحدة شكراً لكم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أصحاب المعالي والسعادة الحضور الكرام نيابة عن سيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى آل خليفة ملك البلاد المعظم حفظه الله ورعاه أعلن على بركة الله بدء أعمال اجتماعات الجمعية العامة للاتحاد البرلماني الدولي في دورتها المئة وستة واربعين والاجتماعات المصاحبة مع خالص الأمنيات لكم بالتوفيق والسداد 
The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Ahmed Limsalem, delivered a speech in which he asserted the support of His Majesty the King in hosting the Assembly of the IPU, which enhances the contribution of Bahrain diplomacy to confronting challenges facing the world. He said that the principles of peace and coexistence are well embedded in the cultural heritage of Bahrain, adding that Bahrain continues its endeavor that aim at promoting dialogue and combating intolerance. Alim Salem also underlined the importance of consolidating efforts to achieve the desired goals of hosting this parliamentary assembly. The chairman of the Shura Council and head of the delegation of the Bahraini Parliamentary Division, Ali Saleh, delivered the Kingdom speech before the 146th Assembly of the IPU. He affirmed that Bahrain, under the leadership of His Majesty the King, presents many initiatives and visions that stem from a firm belief that peaceful coexistence, mutual respect and moderation are the effective pillars emphasized by the National Action Charter and the Bahraini Constitution. As Saleh pointed out that the royal initiative to establish the King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence constituted a remarkable stage of Bahrain's civilizational record and a pioneering step that promoted human values to spread world peace and combat intolerance. He renewed the call made by His Majesty the King to the international community to enhance legislative and technical cooperation in approving an international agreement to criminalize religious, sectarian and racist hate speech, calling to derive inspiration from Bahrain's declaration for this purpose. He commended the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to the legislative authority and his call to work through parliamentary diplomacy to spread the noble values of coexistence and peace in regional and international forums. Member of the United Nations Assembly, Sheikh Ahaya bin Rashid Al Khalifa, underlined the values of peace and coexistence that distinguish the Kingdom of Bahrain, highlighting the Kingdom's efforts in promoting principles that contribute to the good of all humanity. She attributed conflicts between countries to lack of understanding and desire for possession, noting that the world needs to insist on the importance of resolving disputes through negotiation and providing security for people to live in peace. She affirmed the importance of confronting those who stir disputes while exerting collective efforts to reinforce a culture of dialogue and peace. She expressed pride in convening the meeting of the assembly of the IPU in the Kingdom of Bahrain to achieve its noble goals. In a recorded speech, Secretary General of the United Nations Antonio Guterres expressed his thanks for holding the General Assembly of the IPU in Bahrain this year. The Secretary General pointed out the importance of collective action to implement policies that secure equal opportunities for all in societies where human dignity prevails. To assembly of the Interparliamentary Union. You are meeting at the time of many interconnected challenges, including conflict, climate chaos, and growing inequalities. I want to thank you for organizing your assembly this year and on the theme of fighting intolerance and building inclusive societies. Hate speech is spreading like wildfire, and all the evils, anti Semitism, anti Muslim bigotry, persecution of Christians, xenophobia, and racism are on the rise. These harmful afflictions feed off each other. We can only address them by joining forces, by recognizing diversity as richness, by investing in social inclusion, by confronting mis- and disinformation online, and ensuring accountability while protecting freedom of expression. As parliamentarians, you are pivotal to designing and implementing policies that provide equal opportunities for everyone, including women, youth, and historically marginalized communities. You translate people's hopes into national and international action. Let us work together to ensure lives of dignity for all in just and equitable societies. And I thank you. The IPU Secretary General Martin Chungong thanked Bahrain for hosting the assembly, stressing that it has received Bahraini support at all levels and expressed pleasure and pride in the kingdom for hosting the event. I would like to thank the authorities of this great land of Bahrain and its leadership under His Majesty the King. I also want to acknowledge the support that we have received from the government, parliament and people of Bahrain as we congregate here in Manama. Ladies and gentlemen, this morning, as I was preparing my notes for this speech, I did ask my colleagues, so how many people are here in Manama from abroad to attend this assembly? And she told me we have something like 1,700 delegates here, most of them parliamentarians, parliamentary staff, members of uh, different partner organizations, 
including some 60 speakers of parliament from across the globe. The array of participants here tonight is reflective of the human race itself, the diversity that we embody. We are here of different backgrounds, religion, race, cultures, political affiliation, and all. But we are united here over the next several days in service to mankind. I would like to register our gratitude to Bahrain for offering the IPO the opportunity to play its role as the global convener of parliaments. The president of the IPU, Duarte Bakeko, said that this event is the appropriate forum to discuss the issue of promoting peaceful coexistence and inclusive societies and combating all kinds of issues and praised Bahrain's hosting of the Bahrain Dialogue Forum last year. May I say that I will speak in name of all of you to say thank you to the National Assembly of Bahrain for its gracious and capable hosting of this assembly in the wonderful surroundings of the recently opened exhibition World Bahrain. Mr. Speaker and Mr. Chairperson, to both of you, my, I need to say thanks again for your personal commitment on the preparation of this assembly. All the details were oversight. And now we have, we parliamentarians across the world, we have all the conditions to have a very productive and successful assembly. The theme of this assembly is the promotion of peaceful coexistence and inclusive societies and combating all discrimination. And allow me to say that this is the correct place to discuss this issue. As I had the possibility to confer during the Bahrain Dialogue Forum few months ago, where two great religious leaders, His Holiness Pope Francis and the Grand Imam of Al Azhar, His Eminence Dr. Ahmed Al Tayed, met with the support of His Majesty the King Ahmad bin Isa Al Khalifa. The Interparliamentary Union, Governing Council, the Administrative and Policy Making Body, has elected Speaker of Bahrain's Council of Representatives Ahmed Lamsalam as President of the IPU 146th Assembly. Lamsalam expressed his thanks and appreciation for the confidence of the participants and said that their trust is a parliamentary responsibility for constructive dialogues, deeper cooperation, collective action, and the fulfillment of aspirations. He added that he was looking forward to the 146th IPU Assembly hosted by Bahrain to be a milestone in the IPU collective action. Speaking at a press conference held on the sidelines of the meetings of the 146th IPU Assembly, President Duarte Bakeko affirmed that Bahrain is hosting over 140 parliaments to discuss key international issues and challenges. He underlined the importance of the Assembly in items on its agenda, affirming that peaceful coexistence and the promotion of democracy are the most important topics. He asserted that parliamentarians should harness their tools for a world of peace and coexistence, adding that this international gathering aims at defending human rights, including the rights of women all over the world and reinforcing the participation of the youth in political life and their representation in parliaments. The Kingdom of Bahrain hosting of the International Parliamentary Union in its 146th edition is considered one of the biggest international events which affirms the high status of the Kingdom in hosting high-profile events. More on this report. The Kingdom of Bahrain witnessed remarkable attendance from Arab and international parliaments while hosting the 146th IPU Assembly, which reflects the highest status reached by the Kingdom and its ability to host many high-profile events. And this hosting reflects the appreciation of the international community and the steps taken by the Kingdom and its democratic march. Bahrain is the land of tolerance, of peaceful coexistence, and so is the right place to join parliamentarians from 150 countries uh, and discuss the issues of humankind, the, the issues, uh, the problems that affect all of us and try with dialogue and with respect to find solutions to these problems. 
This high-level and one-of-a-kind assembly is the perfect opportunity to show the world the commitment of Bahrain in enhancing peaceful coexistence on the local, regional and international levels. If you can look at it right now, this is one of the biggest uh, attended IPU events ever since COVID-19 came. And we have over 60-something uh, speakers here and over 1,500 uh, participants. So it is something, we, it has been grand for us to see participation, but this time we see the very big number and we're building on to make sure that other members of parliament and also other countries participate in IPU. Grateful to Bahrain to organize this meeting it's a fantastic organization in a fantastic environment, in a fantastic building as well, and it's well organized. I thank uh, the Kingdom of Bahrain for organizing this event. This assembly is gaining increasing importance in light of the slogan it bears, which is to promote peaceful coexistence, society's comprehensiveness, combating intolerance, and which came in harmony with the established principles adopted by the Kingdom of Bahrain. The Kingdom of Bahrain received many international commendations for its organization of the assembly of the IPU and the meetings held on its sidelines. More on this report. On the 11th of March, the international community witnessed the launch of the 146th General Assembly of the Interparliamentary Union and its accompanying meeting in the Kingdom of Bahrain, which is the largest parliamentary gathering in the world under the slogan promoting peaceful coexistence and inclusive societies fighting intolerance. The international community praised the Kingdom of Bahrain's policy of promoting solidarity and international partnership and its keenness to promote democracy and the respect for human rights for the benefit of all. The participating parliamentarians also praised all the facilities and procedures provided by Bahrain, as well as the provision of a platform to discuss the most important issues and topics to reach appropriate recommendations and solutions. This parliamentary gathering is a reflection of the important position that the Kingdom of Bahrain has established on the map of international political and democratic action and its continuous efforts to promote a culture of peace and dialogue for the benefit of all. Upon the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to provide modern and integrated services to citizens and the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Minister of Interior General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa launched the e-passport of Bahrain. The Minister of Foreign Affairs Dr. Abdul Latif Al Zayani, the Minister of Finance and National Economy Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, the Minister of Transportation and Telecommunications Mohammed Al Kabi, the Chief of Public Security Lieutenant General Tariq Al Hassan, and senior officials attended. The Minister of Interior expressed gratitude for the milestone affirming that the project reflects the capabilities and determination of the national workforce to contribute to enhancing performance and achieving excellence in services. He said that launching the e-passport is a turning point in facilitating travel procedures for citizens. He stated that the timeline for achieving the cabinet's initiatives to develop the services of nationality, passports and residence affairs as part of the economic recovery plan including the e-passport is moving forward at a steady pace. The minister thanked the interior ministry under secretary and PRA team and the concern a passport committee for the role and efforts to achieve this milestone that would contribute to facilitating citizens' transportation. He said that the e-passport is an achievement that could improve the classification of the passport of Bahrain globally due to its high quality, characteristics, and security specifications, which adhere to accuracy and all international standards in this regard, in addition to helping to obtain visas and get visa exemption from various countries. Meanwhile, in PRA, under Secretary Sheikh Hisham bin Abdurrahman Al Khalifa delivered a speech in which he hailed the support and follow-up of the Interior Ministry from the first day. He said that, that he was dedicated to making the project an NPRA priority. He added that the minister followed up on the project's progress and was aware of all its details for directives and guidance, contributing to launching a remarkable passport in all aspects. He explained that the passport aims to facilitate the travel experience for citizens by facilitating the process of traveling and transiting at airports because it contains an electronic chip that includes all vital data for its holders. He noted that the directors with the Interior Minister of Interior to implement the project, many views and ideas have been developed, leading to realizing the importance of issuing a passport that reflects the ancient Bahraini civilization and highlights the current development and the vision of its leadership. He also highlighted the importance of the passport for containing the most prominent modern security technologies. The ceremony included a presentation on the project's phases, from the designing stages to the final design, the security, technical and aesthetic characteristics that reflect Bahrain through artistic painting 
stories that tell the story of the past, present and future. The Minister of Interior honored the project's committee members, including representatives from the Foreign Affairs Ministry, Transportation, Telecommunications Ministry, Information and Government Authority and the NPRA. He thanked them for their efforts and wished them all the best in serving the nation. The minister also toured an exhibition the NBRA organized on the sideline of the ceremony on some historical documents and images about the project's progress. He held the advanced it items showcased at the exhibition, including the advanced technology that contributed to reaching out to the current high-tech e-passport. I'm proud today to launch the first Bahraini e-passport uh, that reflects the vision of our leadership. The new e-passport is unique in its security feature. It, it is considered to be one of the best passports in the world. It was part of the 25 initiative that been adopted by the cabinet and implemented by uh, MPRA. And we are proud and happy today with this launch. I would like also to take this opportunity to thank uh, Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah, the Minister of Interior, for his support uh, in launching the new e-passport. It's increased the security feature in the passport. That's give the, when you travel to the, any officer, uh, border officer, that give you uh, the more secure uh, because all your information is saved in the chip and it's not rewritable. So you can't uh, do anything or uh, fix anything in the chip. So it will build more trust between you and the, any other uh, border officer. The design always starts off as a concept, but being involved in the project for the number of years that I have, there's a very science, there's a science orientated part to the design. So there's the aesthetic and then there's the science. But even in the concept level, I'm already thinking, we are HID already thinking, how can we build that security within the document? For example, we've used graduates before, um, very talented designers and artists, and asked them to come up with concept ideas. But when they do their, their ideas, it's very hard to take their, their designs and manufacture them into a, a secure document. So having that knowledge ahead of time helps me because while I'm looking at the Fasca fish or I'm looking at the Al Fata mosque, I'm thinking, how will we secure this book? How will we make this one of the most secure books in the world? And so it's having, I guess, that experience and having that knowledge of, of how different features will work. A great example is the pearl. It's a simple round spherical pearl shape. So we thought that's a nice idea just to have that as a simple window, two windows, one larger pearl, one smaller pearl in the, in the bio, bio data page. And that's just one example of many that we featured in, in the book. Under the patronage of the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, Honorary President of the Royal Equestrian and Endurance Federation, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and in the presence of the President of Brief, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, Rider Mahmoud Abdul Qadir was crowned the winner of the His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Show Jumping Championship. His Highness congratulated the winners, noting the development of show jumping. He affirmed his keenness to support show jumping competitions by increasing the prizes and praised the success of the championship. He expressed appreciation to the sponsors of the championship. The first place winners were crowned in various competitions and the names of the winner of the car prizes provided by His Highness were drawn as well as cash prizes were also drawn in addition to honoring the sponsors.